Hey, welcome back. We haven't done a project video in a while, and so if you follow us on our Monday morning briefing videos, you've heard me say that we did have one we were working on, and it's gonna be for this, the new Ladies Clutch Wallet. This is gonna be a step-up project, so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult than our other uh, Ladies Clutch Wallet that we do. We've already done one of these um, in a previous project video, and you can certainly go check that one out. The interiors on that one are a lot easier to put together. In this project, the interior is gonna be a little bit more involved. If you've been wanting to try some T-Pockets or been wanting me to kind of explain how I do T-Pockets for the credit card slots, then this is gonna be a great video for you because that's what we're gonna talk about in here. We touched a little bit on the T-Pockets in our bifold video project that we did, um, but that was a very simple uh, couple couple T-Pockets, just two, two on each side, that was it, wasn't, wasn't very involved. This one's gonna have a series of T-Pockets which will create the slots for uh, your credit cards, ID, things like that. We also do a couple slots down here for either a checkbook or just sets of cash or little receipts or anything, and those are actually a, a couple little T-Pocket designs there as well. We also are adding on to this one a coin purse with a zipper, and so it, I show you how to do a little six inch zipper in here for the uh, coins or, or any kind of loose change or anything that you wanna have kind of contained in there, and then behind that is another pocket there. And so, like I said, this, this interior is gonna be just a little bit more involved. It's not super difficult, but it will be a little bit more challenging. That's why we're calling it kind of a step up project. So if you've done the other clutch wallet that we did, this one will be a good one just to kind of step it up and give you a little bit more skill set to where you can maybe come up with your own designs for interiors, have a little bit more knowledge of T pockets and kind of how we can assemble the interiors. The, all of the interior pieces in this wallet, as you'll see in the video, are cut from kangaroo. I would recommend in doing this pattern to use something around a two ounce, two to three ounce, somewhere around there, really no thicker because we've got a lot of pieces of leather in here. And if you use too thick a leather, it's gonna make the actual wallet very, very cumbersome and real thick and bulky. And so I like to use kangaroo. That's my interior uh, material of choice. But you can also use some of the new goat skin that we told you about on one of the previous Monday morning videos. Um, that stuff is a two to three ounce, feels just like kangaroo. Um, and it's a, it's a lot cheaper than kangaroo. And that stuff would work out really, really well as well. We also have a pattern pack as usual on any of our project videos. We do offer a pattern pack. And so that is a digital pack that you can print out on your own printer after you purchase it. And you can purchase that by going to the link that's down in the description. That'll take you right there to it. It'll give you all the cut lines, all the, all the different cut lines for all the interior pieces, the outside panel, as well as a number of different tooling patterns, just like all our other patterns. Remember, those are instant downloads. We do not mail those out to you. So if you're interested in that, go right ahead and, and click that link and you can grab that and then you can reference this video to see how we build that. But let's hop right into the video and get one of these made right quick. All right, so I've got a piece of 910 here that I'm gonna go ahead and cut the main body piece for this clutch wallet out. We're not gonna make these out of 910. I would suggest doing them around five, six ounce, even four to five ounce would be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down on our splitter once we cut it. So here we've got the Cobra Class 14 and we're gonna run that piece of 910 through. I've already run a piece of scrap to adjust and I'm finishing out there right around five ounce. And so that's gonna be what we want to use for our main body piece. And then we'll go ahead and just put some blue painters tape on there just to keep it from stretching when we're tooling it. If you're not tooling yours, you don't need to take do this step. You can just skip this part. And here I'm just going to go ahead and put our little marks here of where our tooling windows are going to be. If you buy the pattern pack, it'll have those on there for you to show you exactly where to tool. You could certainly tool the entire piece completely and then go from there. And I'm just going to scribe my lines here for our border and then we'll start drawing and tooling. I'm not gonna show all of the tooling as usual on our project videos because it'll just make them too long. We've got videos dedicated to that, so you can certainly um, go back to reference those if you're interested in learning the tooling.
So now we're going to go ahead and oil this. We've given this a good afternoon worth of dry time, so it's nice and dry. We're going to put some oil on it, reduce using olive oil. And then here we're going to take tan coat, and we're going to go ahead and just seal that because we're going to antique it. So we're going to go ahead and put our resist down. And now we'll take our medium brown antique or dark brown antique is what I use, and we'll go ahead and just get this all antiqued. We have a video covering our antiquing process and you can certainly reference that if you're interested in trying your hand at some antiquing. Okay, so now I've got a uh, hide of veg tanned kangaroo leather, and that's where we're going to cut all the pieces for our interior. You can see how many pieces are we're going to have to cut out here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw all of these on the hide, picking out the best spots for it, and kind of paying attention to where any blemishes are. And I'm just putting marks there. The patterns, and if you get the pattern pack, it's got marks for all your lineups, for all the pocket pieces. And so that's what I was doing there, just kind of marking when I go ahead and trace off the pattern, I go ahead and mark that and get it ready so I know exactly where to line up all my pockets. So we'll get all this cut. Now here I am going to cut all the interior pieces out using my round knife. I don't usually use my round knife to cut out parts, it's just something I'm not as comfortable with as I am with my trim knife, So, um, especially on thicker leathers, but for this kangaroo it worked really well. I would advise that if you're not very familiar with a round knife or you don't have a whole lot of skill with a round knife yet, um, just be very careful if you are going to try that, but I do find that that kangaroo cuts out a little bit better. You have a little bit more precision with that round knife, but use it with caution because it is a very dangerous tool to use. All right, the first piece of the interior that we'll, we'll make here will be the coin pocket um, with a zipper in it. And you'll notice here that I'm only cutting one line and a little teardrop type opening where the actual zipper pull will rest when it's closed. Um, this is to, to create a little bit of leather that will sit over the top of the zipper when the actual clutch is closed and that won't mar up the interior uh, liner of the clutch. And I thought it was just a neat idea. I had seen it done on some other projects that I've seen over the years and I've always wanted to try it and I thought this was a good project to try that on and so you'll see we'll just cut that one line and then that teardrop shape out and you'll see how that comes together but I think it's a really neat application and it looks really classy inside this clutch wallet. Now the only zippers that I had were too long and so the zipper needs to be about six inches that's what the, the slot is for the zipper and so I ended up having to shorten a zipper and so this is just kind of how I go about shortening one if I do need to and basically we're just going to stitch the zipper down to make a stop and then we'll cut the excess zipper off. You can do this a number of different ways They actually make zipper stops that you can buy and uh, do it a little bit more professionally but I find that you're never going to see it it's inside the the pocket so we went ahead and just used string and then that way we can shorten the zipper down.
Now here we're just going to use double-sided tape to install our zipper. You'll see me use this a lot throughout this video for the interiors. You can buy some of this from Maker's Leather Supply in Waco. Aaron sells this tape and it is phenomenal. I use it on a lot of projects, especially these small projects. But it's very simple to use and a lot cleaner than trying to use glue. And now we'll get that zipper lined up and get it inset so we can sew it into the coin pocket. So now our zipper is stitched in and you can see how the zipper functions absolutely fine with that piece of leather over the top of it. It's just going to add a little bit of protection from those zipper teeth on the inside of the liner of the uh, clutch wallet. And I think it just gives it a really neat look, real professional. And so I'm just going to pull the zipper tab down here on the end so that we can begin to fold this in half. You're just going to fold this coin pocket completely in half, line up your edges, and I'd already applied glue around the edge so that it was nice and dry and ready to go ahead and assemble. And so I'm just lining that up and we'll glue that down. That'll create your coin pocket. And so here we'll begin to assemble our tea pockets. What I do is I take my bottom pocket, which is a, actually a full, just your full pocket, it'll cover, cover the bottom of it. And I go ahead and line it up, get it in its spot, and we'll go ahead and make some marks on the top. And then we'll do the same for each pocket right after that. We'll use those marks to line up the bottom of the next tea pocket. So you can see there, those tabs, we'll line those up with those marks there. And then we'll put marks on top and do the same thing going forward. If you buy the pattern pack, it does have lineup marks for all of these pockets, but I would suggest doing it this way than trusting the pattern just in case you cut out your pockets a little bit differently or uh, maybe didn't cut them true to fit. And this way you ensure that they're where they need to be when you sew them in place. And so now we'll begin to put the double-sided tape on the two tabs at the top and a, a little strip along the bottom of the pocket. I apologize, I kind of got out of the shot here, but you'll see on some, some of the other ones that we do as well exactly where I'm putting that tape. 
but it's just to hold the tabs down and the bottom of the pocket. You're, the only tape that we're going to pull off and stick will be the bottom of the pocket because we've got to sew each of those bottoms down before we actually sew the tabs down on the top of each one. So you'll see what I mean here in just a second, but um, just line them up starting from the top and working your way down and don't glue those tabs down. You'll leave the, the tape on those or if you're gluing, don't glue those yet. You're only wanting the bottom in its place where it's supposed to be. Now when you line these pockets up, be sure that you're pushing them up against the pocket above it so that you don't get a bunch of gap between your tabs, between the top pocket tab and the next pocket's tab. You want those to fit pretty nice, nicely so that they're nice and snug and you don't have a gap in there. And so now as you can see here, the only thing that's actually glued or taped down is the bottom of each pocket. And we're gonna leave the, the very bottom pocket off for right now. Now we've gotta sew the bottom of each one of those in place. If you don't sew them, they could eventually come undone and then the cards could theoretically pass all the way through. And so we wanna go ahead and just sew a real simple little line right down the bottom on each individual pocket. This can be a little cumbersome depending on the machine that you have, but it's really not that bad. Um, you want to sew each one down and that way they're good and secure. So now that the bottoms are all sewn down, I've pulled the tape off of all the tabs so they're all ready to be glued down or stuck down. And so now I will kind of, if you need to stretch them just a little bit so that they butt up to the one above it, that's fine. But you want to glue all those tabs down to where they're, they're all nice and snug and everything looks good. And then we'll go ahead and sew that once we get the bottom pocket glue, uh, put in place or taped in place, glued in place, whatever. Um, we'll go ahead and put that, that on. I'm going to add a piece of tape here and then we'll go ahead and put that in its place. So now the card pockets are completely assembled. We're just gonna sew two lines, one on each side, running down the edge. You don't need to sew the ends, just one down each edge, and that will sew down all the tabs, and then we can edge and slick the sides of it, and it'll be ready to install into the clutch wallet. You'll notice here that I left some space along the bottom of that bottom pocket. That's because you're going to come around and sew 
that down when you sew around the final clutch wallet when we assemble it. And I'm just trimming off some excess here. Any kind of little trimming that you need to do, you can do now. And then we'll sand, edge, and slick the sides of, the, of this card slot pocket. Okay, so now we'll assemble the pockets for the cache at the bottom um, inside the interiors. Now this is gonna be attached to the main liner. So your main liner, uh, again, I've got the, in the pattern pack, it's got a marks where all these pieces go, but we're gonna go ahead and mount these on there. I've already marked the main liner piece. And so I'm just gonna tape up these pockets and get them ready to install, and then we'll put them in place. I'm gonna go ahead here in a minute and I'll, I'll mark those all those little marks that I made when we cut them out. I'll mark them a little bit heavier so I can see them a little bit better, and then we'll install these pockets. So now with this pocket taped in place, we'll go ahead and sew the bottom of it down as well. It's the same thing as the other pockets. We just gotta sew the, a line down the bottom of that. And now we can glue on the bottom pocket or the final pocket. This one will require no sewing until we sew the actual liner into the main body of the clutch wallet. And I've got my marks on where the coin pocket needs to go. And so we'll go ahead and tape that up and uh, position that and tape that in. And that way that's ready to go. Now this coin pocket will have to be sewn in place along the bottom. So we'll go ahead and sew that now on the machine. Just sew one strip right down the bottom. Now 
Now that that's put in place, we'll go ahead and mount our credit card slot pocket and that will tape in along the outer edge because we want this open on the top and the bottom. I don't want it um, stitched in place or anything like that, only along the outer edges. And that's so in case somebody does want to carry a checkbook, they can slip their registry up underneath there or down through the top either way. But we'll go ahead and just position that basically centered of the coin pocket there. And um, you can just eyeball that and just center it in there, um, top to bottom and left to right. And that's the interiors. They're completely assembled and ready to be installed into the uh, main piece of the wallet. And so now we'll go ahead and get that ready. Now here we're gonna take our pattern and just mark where our buttons are gonna go. We're gonna put some line 21 snaps in there. And so I've already got it marked where they need to be. And so we'll go ahead and punch those holes and then we'll go ahead and pull this blue painter's tape off. You could pull that off at any time after the antiquing process, but we're gonna pull that off now. Now this is a step you do not have to do, but I felt like it needed a little bit of reinforcement right there for the button since we're not going through the liner. And so I went ahead and glued just a little scrap piece of kangaroo right there just to kind of beef up where the snap's gonna go. And there's our line 21 snap. We'll go ahead and install that on this piece first because we won't be able to get to it once the wallet is assembled. And now we're here at the glue bench and we've got our interior completely assembled, ready to be installed and our wallet back, our tooled antiqued snap in place. Now we'll go ahead and glue this. I use two coats on here and um, we'll glue it up good and then we'll assemble that. Now our glue has had a chance to dry and so we'll just glue the back onto the interior. Be sure and line this up, kind of center it up. I leave a little bit of feather in the patterns and so you should have some overhang of the, of the interior around the outside of your main body piece. So just try to center that up best you can. And then I like to hammer it, hammer it down, make sure the glue sticks really good and that way everything doesn't shift or move around while we're trying to sew it. And now we'll take our horseshoe brand groover. That's the groover that I use for my large machine. And we'll go ahead and groove that and then sew it on the Cobra class four. Here I'm just cutting away the excess stitches and then we'll go ahead and trim that little bit of feather from the interior all the way around.
And there's our interior and wallet's pretty well assembled. And we're just going to kind of fold it just to make sure everything should fit nicely, should fold nicely, should have a good weight to it. Now we'll go ahead and hop to the sander and get that sanded. We're going to sand the edges here. You could certainly use a sanding block, whatever you like to use. We'll get those edges sanded, edged, and slicked. And then we'll be ready for edge dye. And now we can install the female side or the button side of our snap. We'll go ahead and get that installed on the flap. We previously marked that hole or made that hole, so we should be good to go there. try our snap out and it seems to snap where it needs to be it looks nice now here I'm using a dye applicator had a friend give me a few of these I've been playing around with them it seemed to work pretty good get a little bit more control with that versus a dauber and here I'm just gonna put my final coat of tan coat this will just make sure that it's got a nice shiny edge and nice shiny finish on it and there's our finished clutch wallet. As you can see everything kind of folds real nice. It doesn't look super thick. It opens well, bends nicely. It's not real stiff. Zipper slides really nice. It's got plenty of room for coins or whatever you want to put in there. It's got a pocket behind. We've got plenty of card slots for cards and ID. But that's our new design on our clutch wallet. Okay, so that's our clutch wallet. Like I said, you can see in the video, it's, the interiors are a little bit more involved. You're gonna have some cost if you do this out of kangaroo. I think I figured it up. You're gonna have probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to $50 in your kangaroo, probably just for the interiors. Um, so that would make one of these kind of a little bit more pricey than our previous clutch wallet that we did. But if you're looking to try to make something that's a little bit more of a premium quality, it's got a little more options for whoever's gonna carry it to where they've got a little bit more storage room, it just looks a little bit more professional. This is a great project. I hope you enjoyed that video. Give it a shot. Like I said, if you want the pattern pack that includes some tooling patterns, different tooling patterns for making one of these and all the patterns for all the pieces, click the link down in the description. That'll take you right there and you can purchase that off our website. Remember that it is a digital download. So we do not mail that pattern out to you. You will get an email or you can log into your store account on our website and download that straight from there and print it out on your own printer. When you do print that, be sure to print it actual size. Don't let your printer settings scale it at all so that it's the right measurement. We do have the measurements on there, so just check those when it prints out to ensure that it's printing out the correct size. We really appreciate you watching the video. We've got more project videos coming up, and be sure to check out our Monday morning briefing videos each week, and be sure to subscribe to this channel as well. Thank you all, and we'll see you all in the next project video.